Well, hello, my pretties. Um, this is the Lion Queen. Welcome to episode 275 of Shadows and Pretties. So the last episode I did a review on was the 1990 movie called um, Graveyard Shift, which was the last um, movie we reviewed last episode. So today in this episode, we are going to be reviewing a never this Stephen King movie and... This one, honestly, was definitely one I have no idea that it would be be this movie, but here we go. Today, we are going to be reviewing um, the 1989 movie called Pet Cemetery. Now, this is based on the book by the same name by Stephen King. So, however, though, there is a, well, remake of Pet Cemetery, which came out in 2019, which is... Pretty much came out the same time, you know, the same um, year as It Chapter 2 came out, which I do plan to review It Chapter 1 and 2 in the future, as well as, um, well, the miniseries It in the future. So, I don't think I will be remake doing a remake of, well, like reviewing the remake of Pet Cemetery yet until I've seen it because I've not seen the remake of it yet. But this one is definitely a pretty good film. And... This is based on, well, the book. Now, the book, now this book, Pet Cemetery, came out in 1983, but the movie came out in 1989. So, I have not seen the remake of Pet Cemetery, but this is definitely one of the Stephen King films a lot of people would um, only watch once, but then they'll never watch again. This one, this movie right here, pretty much um, has Stephen King in it playing as the minister. So, what is this about? Now, the film rights were sold to George A. Romero in 1984 for about 10000 although King had previously declined several other offers for the film adaptation. But, of course, he was busy with Monkey Shines at one point. The development ex- executive, Lindsay Doran, loved the finished script and advocated for it, the Embassy Pictures. And then at Paramount, she became the vice president and stuff. So, um, anyways, I mean, the casting was actually pretty neat and well made. I do like the filming. And if you guys were wondering, it was shot in Maine as the story was set. And Stephen King himself wrote the screenplay production, which was pretty interesting. So... This is definitely one of those movies that you pretty much will only watch once but never watch it again. And you know, make it kid another thing. Pet Sem- there is a sequel to this movie called Pet Cemetery 2, which came out in 1992. That one is not a good movie. I don't really like the sequel to um, Pet Cemetery, in my honest opinion. But I have not seen the 2019 remake of Pet Cemetery yet, so I'm not going to be reviewing the remake until I've seen it. So, I'm going to go ahead with the plot of what Pet Cemetery is about in case if you guys are, you know, have not seen the movie in a long time or for those who want a refresher. And, yeah, like I said, if you don't want me to spoil anything, I would recommend you click off um, this video right now if you, um, if you don't want to hear any spoilers. So, basically, this is about a, about a family in this story known as the Creed family, where Lois, Lewis, Rachel, um, and their children, Ellie and Gage, and they have a pet cat at church. They move in from Chicago to Lodoro, Maine, after, well, Lewis accepts a job as a physician with the University of Maine. They befriended their neighbor, Jude Carandel, who then takes them to an isolated pet cemetery. Re- who is the forest behind the Creed's home, which, honestly, it's called the Pet Cemetery. So, Lewis encounters Victor Pascal, a jogger who gets morally re- injured after being hit by a truck. He warns Lewis about the Pet Cemetery before dying, calling Lewis by his name, though they've never met. So, later that night, Pascal appears to Lewis as a ghost that leads him to the cemetery, warn him not to cross the barrier because beyond the ground is sour. So, Lewis awakens, assuming that it was a dream, but notices his feet were covered in dirt. Later on during Thanksgiving, while the family's gone, churches then run run down on the highway. 
Realizing Ellie will be devastated, Jude takes Lewis beyond the pet cemetery and deep into the woods, where they reach about the ancient Menbisqui or something burial ground, where Jude instructs Lewis to bury the cat and warns him not to tell anybody about it, what they have done. So it takes place the next day, where the reanimated church returns to the house. He now stinks and moves sluggishly. His eyes glow gold, and he's vicious towards Elwell. Lewis. So Judd explains that the boy that he revived his pet dog, and although the cat may be different, it will save Ellie the grief of losing her pet. Eventually, sometime later in the movie, Gage gets killed by a truck along the same highway as Jude anticipates that Lewis is considering on burying his son at the, well, pet cemetery. Although Lewis denies it, as Jude believes that introducing Lewis to the Ritual ground aroused the malviolent forces present there, which caused Gage's death. So he tells him the story about a local gold named Bill Batterman, who buried his son Timmy in the ground after he was killed in the World War II. So Timmy then returns to the malviolent zombie. You know, he it's pretty much like a zombie film, which is something. Like it's pretty much like a zombie film. But this is basically a Stephen King version, which, of course, there are definitely something. I can definitely say that right now. So that's pretty interesting because, in all due reality, the terrifying townsfolk, a group of men, including Jude, tried destroying Timmy by lighting up the Baderman house on fire, only for Bill to perish with his son. Jude insists that the burial ground is evil and Lewis must not bury the son there, adding that sometimes the dead is better. So after the funeral, Rachel and Ellie leave for Chicago, while Lewis remains at home, subsequently to take care of the loose ends. Despite Pascal and Jude's warnings, Lewis exterminates his son's body and buries him at the ritual site in Chicago. However, Pascal appears to Ellie in a dream and warns her that Lewis is about to do something terrible. Rachel is unnerved by her daughter's dream, but can only reach Jude when she calls. To who calls Lewis is not their home, she decides to return to Maine, much to Jude's alarm. So that night, reanimated Gage returns to the home and then steals a scalpel from his father's bag. He taunts Jude before slashing the angel's tendon and his mouth before biting his throat off, killing him. Rachel returns home and is lured to... Jude's house by the voice inspector of her dead sister, Zelda, only to discover that she is actually seeing seeing Gage. Holding a scalpel in shock and disbelief, Rachel reaches down to hug her son and kills her. So waking up from his sleep, Lewis notices that Gage's muddy footprints in the house and discovers a scalpel is missing. Receiving the phone call from Gage as that he played with Judy, Jude and Mom, Mommy, he then fills free syringes with morphine, and that's when he leads to heads over to Jude's house. While encountering Church, he kills the cat with the injection before entering the house, as Gage taunts him fervor, and Lewis is then startled by Rachel's body hanging from the attic before Gage attacks him. After a brief battle, Lewis overpowers Gage and injects him with the morphine syringe. Then he lights Jude's house on fire, well, Jude's house on fire, leaving it to burn as... He carries Rachel's body to the burial ground. Pascal then appears and warns Lewis not to make it worse, but Lewis grief stricken to the point of insanity. He believes that he waited too long and he buried Gage, but burying Rachel will only work this time because she just died a few hours ago. So that night, Rachel returns to Lewis and the couple embraced as Rachel takes a knife from her counter before Lewis screams, thus how the movie ends. Well, while I could definitely say this is definitely a Stephen King movie I've seen, but this is definitely one of the films that you would probably only watch once and never watch it again. I mean, this movie is just really upsetting. I mean, the sequel, Pet Cemetery 2, was not that good, but I have not seen the remake of it yet, so I'm going to have to watch the remake, you know, sometime before I make my decision on it. But I mean, this one, while it seems pretty interesting... And it's a pretty good Stephen King movie in a sense, but I have not watched this movie in a long time. I've been avoiding this movie since I first watched it because due to one of those movies, it's been one of those movies where you would only watch it once and, you know, and never watch anything like this again. 
that is definitely something. So, anyways, but with that being said, and that being the case, this movie, I mean, if you're a Stephen King fan and you think you can handle this, you can, you can, you could pretty much do that. You could pretty much handle yourself through there. But what did I think of this story? Well, honestly, it's pretty good. I personally really enjoyed this. I thought it was a really great um, concept for it. So I guess with that being said and that being the case, I personally really thought it was a jo good, enjoyable story. So I guess with that being said, I personally really thought it was really good for what it is. Now, I could definitely say it's definitely a pretty good story. I personally really enjoyed this. I thought it was really neat. So, anyways, with that being said and that being the case, I personally really thought it was a good story. I still really enjoyed this, so, well, I mean, not the story, but, like, the movie itself as well. It's definitely one that I can definitely say was something. I'm not gonna lie. It definitely was something I never thought I'd ever see, but it is definitely a movie that I really have to say that is pretty good. Well, Although it's one of those movies that I have not, um, is one of those movies that a lot of people would watch probably once and never watch it again. So anyways, I guess with that being the case and with that being said, this is just pretty much all I have to really say. But at the same time, I'm going to sit here and just say right now that this is just simply my own personal opinion. Now, anyways, um, this movie is an all right Stephen King movie. I mean, it's just one of those movies that, you know... You'd probably only watch once, but never watch it again. So, I guess with that being said and that being the case, um, like I said before, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions. So, I guess with that being the case and with that being said, um, yeah, what did you guys personally think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done first to help make this story a lot better, feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I am the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys all in the next video. Peace out. And like always... I'll be seeing you all next time. And also, if you are new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload, so that way you guys will not miss an upload. Like I said before, if you're interested in following me on my Twitter account, pretty much, um, pretty much, you can just say, you know, ring the notify. You know, be sure to check out my DeviantArt page and my Twitter account if you guys want to, you know, follow me on there. Also, if you're interested in subscribing to my backup channel known as Miss Dark Shigo, link to that will be in the About page section. Follow me on DeviantArt. Follow me on Twitter. Links to those will be in the About page section of my channel. So if you guys want to go check me out, you are more than welcome to do so. So, I guess with that being said and that being the case, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out. And like always, I'll see you all next time.